pick the empowered team. Alright, so training dummy's got a rating of negative one. And you see just how exciting that is. So this is basically relay chess. Um, oh, but there's also these gamble things that you do each time you combat. Alright, so he chose not to bet against me. Alright, uh, there's a king advance. Oh yeah, if you get your king across the center line, you just win. Um, so that's a little bit different than standard chess. Also, you can like tilt the board and stuff. So if I want to see it from this angle, we can look at it this way. I don't know why you would, but you know, it's a feature. So I want to be careful to not... Let's see, this is a standard bishop, right? And this is a standard bishop. Um, it's possible this game might... Oh, wait. But this queen could only move one square at a time, but this is able to move like a knight somehow? I thought, though, this could only move like a knight if it were protected by a knight. This is... I mean, the rook... The knight could move like a rook, but... Um, I'm surprised that this bishop is able to go to b3 or d3 here. Not that I even intend to do that, but... Um, this game is showing me some rules I didn't even know. Oh, uh, so I need to be a little bit more careful here. Because my queen doesn't actually defend my d-pawn. Uh... The D-pawn being the one that started off as a D-pawn, not the more advanced one there. Um, so, yeah, this... And now this is able to move like a bishop. I'm so confused. Yes, it's adjacent to a bishop, but it's not defended by a bishop. Oh, I I remember now. Pieces are able to... It's not like... It, this is like relay chess, but people are... Uh, pieces are able to move... Uh, similar to the pieces that they're adjacent to, except for this queen is just a normal king. Um, it's like a vizier. So I'm able to move my knight here, and this is check. So it's, yeah, this isn't relay chess. That's my mistake. Um, so yeah, now my knight and bishop can both move like a knight or a bishop. Uh, my opponent's just playing as a standard chess army. Um, so, ooh, this would be check until he takes my bishop. Might not want to do that. But one thing I could do would be um, bishop e6 check. Um, and then, I don't know. Just bring out another piece. I haven't gotten to show off most of the rules of this game yet, though. That's unfortunate. Um, unfortunately, knight g6 is not check. Let's do it anyway, though, because it wins material, right? Oh, but this isn't considered adjacent. You have to be orthogonally adjacent. Well, who knew? There's tons of rules in this game. Um, all right. So we'll just keep developing the pieces. Uh, no, just uh, everything other than the queen and the pawns gets this special ability. All right, so I guess I'll take a pawn and see... He has the option to spend a token, uh, and then he can wager against me to see who wins the combat. Um, I'm going to spend two stones to win this combat. Oh, it also spent two, but I win on ties because I'm the attacker. So, yeah, that's different than normal chess for sure. So now he's got no stones, basically, so if he captures one of my pieces then I can 
uh, start a duel with him. And then we uh, decide, based on the winner of the duel, if his piece is also captured. Um, but he can't start a duel since he has no stones. He'd have to capture a pawn to get a stone. Um, I'm still confused as to how to checkmate this king. <sighs> Pieces everywhere. So, my knight and bishop can move like a knight or a bishop, but if the knight takes the pawn, the knight's no longer adjacent to a, a bishop. So no longer has that kind of locomotion. Wait, if I do bishop takes, however, can I turn the board around? Just see it from this perspective. Oh, you also get the 2D pieces if you like. That might be less distracting, but... Um, so I could look at it from the other side. So, yeah, here's the king. I don't know if this is more or less distracting than, like, this or that or whatever. But, so I got my knight here. If the knight, the knight and the bishop can both move like a knight or a bishop. But, upon having moved, they'll no longer be adjacent to each other. But, if something else does this capture, then this bishop still moves like a knight. Um... So if this bishop captures, he goes back to e8. And I don't have any way to mate the king. But if the bishop on f5 captures... Well, no, I'm sorry. If the pawn captures, um, d6 is already protected by my bishop. So he'd have to play king c6. Um, which I don't know helps me. I mean, I could follow that up with some tricky stuff, but... I don't have a mate there. So I think my best play is probably bishop takes e6, king e8, oh, and then bishop f7 mate. That's how we do it. If you like the 2d pieces, you can look at it this way. This is funny, though. Well, I guess this reminds you that you're playing white. Um... Let's see if I can turn this back. You can see this from a 2D point of view. So yeah, empowered bishop to f7. Uh, he's got nothing that can capture it. And d7's covered by this backward bishop. And e7's covered by the bishop on f5 as well. So this is just mate. Because this moves like a knight, and it moves like a bishop. So there's nowhere for the king to run. Yeah, the gambling pawn is a pretty cool feature. I think this is just too much excitement for Zug. Uh, or it's just too confusing. It's like nothing like chess. Um, so you can play as two kings where you get like these double moves. Where you can say, I want to move my king after I've made my move. To win this, you have to get both kings across the center. So, here we go. Just blitzing it. Uh, if both kings get put in check, you have to get both kings out of check, or you just lose. Um, so, there's some dangers with playing the two kings. Um, also, you have this whirlwind power. Um... Oh, but you have to make that your first move as opposed to what I tried to do. Um, wait, no. My second move can be a whirlwind move. Where I'm just like, bam, 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 and then all the pieces just disappear. Oh, but that's checkmate. So, you know, that probably didn't work so well. But it illustrates the point. Yeah, um... Also, there's, like, the Nemesis army. I forget how this works. You have, like, a queen that can't be captured and cannot capture. Oh, my opponent's also playing Nemesis, so maybe they can remind me how this works. Uh, pawn... Oh, right, pawns just march toward the king. So you could say, like, I'm gonna play, um, pawn to d6 if I wanted to. 
Or I could do like pawn g6. Um, yeah, everything just keeps moving toward the king. Uh, the rest of your pieces aren't constrained this way, just the pawns. You do still have the normal pawn move. Well, you can move forward, but you can't do the double pawn move. Um, so, yeah. Let's see, and then we could just, like, bring out the knights. Yeah, I think unless the forking piece can be captured. I don't really know on the rules. Uh, I'd have to double check all that. I assume that if you can get out of the fork, you're good, but I don't know. Alright, so this is interesting with this whole gambling aspect of the game. Um, like, if he takes my knight, I could take the rook, but he can gamble that I might lose my rook as well. All right, so here we have a queen that moves like a queen, except it can't capture and cannot be captured. Um, which is really annoying to defend against. Like, okay, well, I didn't even need the knight to support this, but, um, yeah, that's mate. And we could play against the dummy and, like, pick the animals, which all move stupidly and differently somehow. Uh, this is like a wild knight that's able to um, uh, capture its, your own pieces. I've never tried this. Let me try it. So let's take our pawn. Oh, I don't even get credit for taking it. That sucks. Um, and then I've got an elephant which just blasts through everything here. Oh, but it has a limited range, that's right. I was trying to remember why that wasn't like the most OP piece ever. Um, it's because it's a short range piece. Um... All right, I'll take your pawn. Oh, we've got a fight on. Oh wait, no, never mind. He's not bidding. Okay. Um. I'll take your bishop. Unless I have something better I can do. Well, let's just take the bishop. Oh, he's going to bid something. Uh, let's bid zero. So the AI bid zero, we called zero. We also bid zero. So we can actually destroy one of the stones in the AI's um, collection there. All right, but... Uh, the deal is that you can't, like, capture one of these elephants unless you're right next to it. Um, I forget what the deal with the... Oh, the tigers can go two spaces, and then upon retreating, they just immediately go back to where they came from. Uh, and the elephant can only be struck by a piece right next to it. So... All these pieces are, like, crazy. They have silly rules. Um, it's like, I can take this knight here, and if I successfully win this and he doesn't bid against me or something, I just go back. So, yeah, tigers are fun. Um... So I'm guessing the AI is going to take my knight or something. Oh, I guess incorrectly. Um, now, the deal here is if I take the knight, I have to charge the full three squares. I don't get a choice. Um, 
So let's kick this knight. And if it goes to d3, then my tiger just takes it. Alright, so here we get to show how an elephant works. Yeah. So, if I want to take this rook, uh, I have to go to a7, which I'm totally fine doing. Oh, we've got a bidding game on our hands again. Uh, I think I'll keep my elephant, thank you very much. Alright. Um, I forget how check works. So I'm attacking the queen indirectly through my knight, I think. So that, okay, this is check. I can capture all the pieces through the king. Um, so the king runs. Hmm. <laughs> if I take on b6 and queen takes, I end up like taking all my pieces there. So let's just take this knight. It's a free knight. Uh, let's go the 2D view, because this is probably too much for some people. Alright, so rook a6. Um, I'm only playing with a few of my pieces here. I guess I've limited the range of most of my opponent's pieces. Uh, so I think this moves like a king or a knight. Here, let's... Bring forward the other elephant. Alright, well, I'm gonna take my knight and your queen. Oh, and you don't get to bid in that case, because I took my own piece first. Um, now I'm gonna take your bishop. I'm not. Sh oh! Oh, but Dark Winds by Midline Invasion. I forgot Midline Invasion was a rule. My mistake. Then we got the Reaper. Uh, where I've got... I don't know. I've got Rooks that can block anything, so I could just like... Poof, my Rook is now in the way. You can't move your King forward. And... Um... Yeah, uh, and the Chinese weren't the only ones to have variants like that. I think these are just normal knights and bishops. Alright, let's exchange. Alright, we are having a duel. My opponent's bidding 0, 1, or 2. I'm going to bid 0. My opponent bid 2, so my bishop is gone. Since 2 is greater than 0. Uh, I forget what the deal with the queen is. <sighs> oh, right, the queen's able to teleport anywhere on the battlefield. Um, that power becomes more powerful if your opponent is not able to bid against your queen. Um... Oh, right, my opponent's playing as the Nemesis, so. Alright, so I got four stones. Um, now I can just, like, take their stuff. Uh, they'd have to spend a stone to bid up against me and do a duel. But they don't have any stones to bid like that, so... Um, so these ghosts or rooks don't actually wait can I play f2 mate no the queen can't capture for checkmate like that um, so yeah I just need to orchestrate a checkmate here somehow In the meantime, I've got plenty of stones. Um, let 
Like, all these pawns are disappearing, so... <laughs> okay, I guess it's true you're able to move your pieces that way. Um, I guess I'd like to have a knight on e4, and I could just play f2 mate. Alright, so f2 mate is the threat. The bishop cannot... these ghosts cannot be captured. Okay, so he does make an escape square. Uh, I don't think my queen can capture a queen. I think he can take anything other than a queen. Um, it's just an interesting twist. Alright, so let's check. And the king's going to go to d1, no doubt. Um... And then figure out how we promote. Um, do I have a choice? Alright, so I have a choice. Do I want a ghost? Another queen? I forget what this is called, what, what the reaper's queen is called. Or I could take a knight or a bishop. Let's take another queen. I think he just takes my queen, though. Uh, so yeah, I can take this. Oh, it's called a ghost. Okay. Wait, so there's... Wait, the reapers are ghosts. Oh, I'm sorry, you're saying I should take a ghost. Ghosts are really cool to take. Um... Alright, so this is check. Ghosts would have kept his queenside pieces frozen. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, if I'm able to have enough ghosts, I can just plug up the position and he can't do anything, but... Um... I kind of like this, too. Obviously, the training dummy is just getting pounded on like a dummy does, but... Um... So let's go here. Oh wait, he could take my queen. But he elects not to, so... Yeah, let's just use the rest of our pieces. Just in case there is some silly checkmate somewhere. Wait, can I not take that? Oh, this is a nemesis queen. That's why it can't capture and it cannot be captured. That's why queen takes queen didn't happen earlier. Okay. I forgot, this isn't a normal chess opponent that I'm playing. Um... So, how am I going to checkmate this guy? I suppose I want to move a ghost over to d1 and then just play knight takes d3 mate. Except that frees up his bishop to move. Um, right, so this queen can't capture, cannot be captured, so let's just promote another pawn. Take a ghost and seal in the king. Oh. That was hanging this entire time? That's interesting. So, how do I stop a midline invasion? Uh, I suppose I play like f6 and g6. So, there's no king h5, king g5, king f5 stuff. Um...
If the rook takes, my queen takes. His pieces on the first rank are invincible, but beyond that, they're in danger. I'm starting to understand why I don't play the Reaper very often. Um, it's not a very active battle. <laughs> it's just tons of maneuvering. And not a whole lot of other stuff going on. Okay, so then we put a ghost in the way, maybe, or... I don't know, I kind of like this bind that I got here. Uh, I'm afraid this queen might move nearby my king, but I think I'm okay. I think queen c8, knight d8, and I don't have to worry about threats to my king. So we'll just take a whole bunch of ghosts. Oh. Oh. Interesting. So the thought is that if I take that with my pawn, his rook checks me. Uh, if I take that with my uh, queen, then we don't have a whole lot going on here. Although, I think this queen has been hanging the whole time. So, let's uh, defend it. Alright, so how do I start to gang up on this? Maybe I do play my ghosts to f3 and e3. Wait, but then he has d5 still. Um, yeah, let's retreat. And then we can move the bishop forward. I like that I've still got this bishop trapped. Um, that appeals to me. So, the only piece we haven't used in this attack is our king. Uh, if this queen gets too close to my king, I can just do king takes queen. But my king's the only one that can take that. Um... Uh, also, I have to stop the queen from invading. So, like, queen d5, I couldn't do king takes because his king would take in return. Um, aye, aye, aye. So now queen a4 is coming. That's annoying. Wait. That's strange. I can just take this. So, I don't see the point. Then I could take that. Uh, this queen I cannot take. But, I don't know, I could just ensnare this king. And then take it, you know? Am I in? Am I even threatening to surround this queen? I hope so. This isn't mate, but I think I have to play it. Otherwise, he has queen c4 and queen a6. It's troublesome. Um, I could play ghost f4 first. Also, I don't know if these queens defend each other. I don't think this is defended. So let's put the queen on f4. You might do queen c4, and this could get ugly. Um, also, I have f5. That's pretty ugly. Um, so this queen can't capture. Oh, I should have been using that to my advantage this whole time. Well, now I have to play bishop d5. Or queen d5 happens. Well, no, yeah. And I can, cannot take the queen on d5. Um, I 
I still have no way to surround this king. Okay, so I should just take more ghosts. Is basically the moral here. These endgames are messy. So now I need to be careful. Oh no, I always have like ghost b5 if I get desperate. But no, I can actually play queen b5 too. Um. Oh. How dare you threaten my stuff? That's very threatening. Um. So. So then, um, to keep the queen at bay, we block most of the checks. And then we promote again. Uh, that's... Oh, he's threatening queen d5 again. Um... I guess I stopped queen d5 the most obvious way, which would be teleport to d5. And since his queen cannot capture, that check is not available anymore. Alright, and then we promote to another ghost. Yeah, no, I think that my queens can only threaten things that are not a king. In the case of the Nemesis army, my queens can't capture the queen either. But, you know, we're going to surround this king. What I'm always worried about is that this queen is going to get some ridiculous perpetual check across my back rank. Um, so, yeah. Now I'm finally going to liberate... No, I don't want to do that, though. Yeah, let's liberate the bishop this way. So it can now move toward its pawn. Um, oh. This is wholly unnecessary, but let's do it anyway, because we've come this far. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty spooked-out king. Uh, okay, I could have done this a while ago. Um, let's take the Reaper against the Training Dummy again. Maybe I can do better this time. Um, so, playing Ghost against a normal chess army this time. Um, All right, free pawn. Okay, so there's actually going to be a duel here, is what I'm seeing, and he's bidding something. Now, he has an option of bidding 0, 1, or 2. If he bids more than I do, um, then my piece disappears. However, if he bids 0, and I also bid 0, um, then I can force him to give up a stone. In this case, he bid two to get rid of my pawn. Now, getting rid of my pawn gained him a stone. Um, anyway, that's how that all worked. So, let's take the center. Um, if this king gets too close to threatening something, then I'll make a plan. I guess I have to make a plan now. Uh... So, my queen doesn't actually threaten his king on h5 if he goes there. I could do just g4 here. This king can't go further. Not one inch further. Um. Yeah, so now let's just push all the pawns. This seems like a great idea. Look at all the space I control. And no weaknesses whatsoever. Except for all the holes that I'm leaving behind. 
but you know, those are just figments of imagination. This is a perfectly coordinated attack. Yeah, we don't need to duel there. I'll just take your knight. So now I've got four stones. He's got three. He could duel. Or he could just give up a knight. Works for me. Um, Alright, so... I could do queen takes queen. My queen teleports anywhere, which is a really nice ability. But that gets... Well, actually, I could just do pawn takes queen. Why well, give up my queen for a queen? I say give up because surely we duel. Um, and I'd have to invest some stones to make sure I don't lose my queen, but... Let's just bid not. Alright, so it bid two. It really wanted that pawn gone off the board. Um, if I can get my opponent down to just one stone, then my queen can start taking everything for free. But also I'm just winning, so... Yeah, I think that would be nice. They don't have a move list right now. And I don't think any new development's going to happen on the game. Um, it was released a while ago, and the developer did what they wanted to do with it, and they're happy with it. Um, I screwed up. My rook doesn't actually defend this pawn. So I'm going to check the king, and we'll watch as I just lose. Yep. I'm not very good at this. Alright, so... Let's try the Reaper again. Maybe this time I can manage to get my opponent down to, like, no stones. And then just take all their things. So first, we try to make some kind of fortress on the board. Well, that's clever. Before I could seal in the bishop, he moves out. Um... I should have moved my ghost in the way of the bishop, of course. Uh, so that's my mistake. Alright, free bishop. Free bishop. Alright, that bishop's not getting out. Sorry. You have to try harder. Okay, that doesn't develop the knight. So let's just stop the knight from going this way also. Let's see if he plays anything even remotely ambitious. If not, we'll just slowly, gradually trudge forward as we listen to Moonlight Sonata. Just very slowly progressing. Okay. Oh, my queen could take this. Um, I could lose a duel if I take it, but if I take that, that's a free rook. Uh, I'm still threatening to take the rook, though, so... No need to risk a duel when I can just take stuff. Um, Uh-oh. Wait, no, this didn't crash. Never mind. The music just ended at the same time I took a pawn. That's okay. Ah, uh, let's well, not bid. Alright, so... That was actually an even exchange there. Um, this is checkmate. Okay. Brilliant! I don't know why the computer didn't make any effort to avoid the mate. That's really confusing. Um, but okay, Reaper wins. I don't think that's how Reaper's supposed to win. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can get an interesting battle. Alright. Maybe I lead with my knights. Uh, sure, why not? 
Oh, it's gonna duel. Um, Alright, so I've gotten rid of all my opponent's stones. So meaning if my queen takes something, my opponent can't recapture. Um, because it would have to give a stone to duel against a stronger piece. Um, so... So, just put these invincible pieces right in the way, and then bring a knight forward, and checkmate with the knight. No, there aren't multiple AIs, nor is there a way to, like, play online with an AI. So, since there's really... I think if they just had online matchmaking that had an AI, people would be happy to make their own AIs for this. But they don't, so there's no options. <laughs> uh, let's block this. So king g3 is a threat. Now I could just play h6 and g6, but do I have something more aggressive? I don't think I do. I think I have to play h6 and g6. So let's do that. Oh, now he's got queen takes knight. Um, uh, my bad for allowing me, uh, for allowing him to win my knight. It makes it a lot harder to checkmate when you don't have a piece. Um, free bishop. Yeah. I feel if somebody made an AI for this Reaper, though, it would be very strong, because um, this variant has... I mean, this is like trench warfare here. There's uh, no quick winning combination. A human would struggle to find a long winning combination in this variant. So... Um, I think an AI could outcalculate a human without much difficulty. Oh, another interesting thought would be just putting the ghosts on e3 and d3 at the outset. Um, had not thought about that. Alright, so we'll just continue sealing in the king. Uh, that's a free queen. Yeah, so now I just take anything that moves beyond the first rank. It's just free. It's all free. That's a free piece. I guess he's getting my knight. This is amazing, though, how I've, like, trapped in his entire king side. Well, I guess the knight can move. But the rook and the bishop are just completely entombed. <laughs> so I attack both rooks. This is a free pawn. I think once you get ahead in this variant, you just wallop on your opponent and there really isn't much of a contest anymore. Um, or at least once you're ahead with the Reaper, you just keep taking every, everything. Okay, the Knight was the one piece that's, like, free to move about taking stuff, but, um, so that's a free pawn. Yeah, having this Reaper Queen that can just, like, teleport anywhere and take anything is pretty crazy. Uh, what's supposed to balance that out is if your opponent has stones, they can gamble or duel against you. Um, but my opponent has no stones, so, uh, I just have to find the checkmate. Well, that's a free piece. Uh, 
This is also a free piece. As is this. Now this queen does not threaten like a king. So this king can freely move about. Um, so yeah, we just observed um, the AI just conceding the game basically. And now the rest is just a matter of technique. What pieces should I take, guys? How many ghosts do I need? Uh, the king can't move beyond my wall of pieces, so it's just going to shuffle back and forth. Yeah, he dueled away all of his stones, and so he doesn't have any stones left to duel with. Um, so... It's a sad time for white. And these ghosts completely immobilize white's army. I think I'll take some more ghosts. Yeah. I wonder if there's a move limit. Or move count limit. Alright, so we take a ghost. I guess that makes sense, because these queens aren't useful against a king. Alright, so... Zugzwang, you have to move, you can't take my ghosts. Oh, that's clever. Fine, I need another ghost to push you back the correct direction. Actually, no I don't. If I put my ghost on F3, it still can't be taken, so... So now we have king g1, now we have king h1. Um, so yeah. Well, let's develop the king. Oh wait, no, this is a midline invasion if my king crosses to take that. Do I have any way to take this bishop? My knight could take it. Um, I'd have to move my pieces to let my knight... No, my knight could make it to d2 and then take the bishop, but only with check. Alright, so you take another ghost. Yeah, let's go get the bishop. And the important thing is that this is with check, otherwise that's stalemate. Check, sir. Let me go back. And then the queen takes the pawn, and um, we promote all the rest of the pawns. And then we do the midline invasion thing. Or something like that. I haven't scripted this all out yet. So we go back, and then push our other pawns. And just because we can, let's put the ghost here. Well, I mean, in chess, it's called the threefold repetition rule. It should be the three, threefold rep. Well, it is the threefold repetition of position rule. But that's just a long name. But it has nothing to do with move repetition. It's all about is the position identical? Um, which, pretty clearly, it's not the same position. Alright, so how do we do this? Um, how are we going to get... I guess once we have enough ghosts, it becomes pretty obvious what's going on. 
Man, that AI is really thinking it through. I wonder if I put all my pawns like on the seventh rank, just how difficult a time it would have calculating what's the correct way for white to play. Um, there's not a whole lot to calculate though, I guess, once they're all promoted. Yeah, that's the nuance, is that we're going to have to temporarily let the king move about a little bit more so that we can get um, all the pawns promoted. Alright, so ghost. Ghost. There's a ghost. Here a ghost, there a ghost, everywhere a ghost. Alright, so we're just gonna start moving these. Actually, I have enough ghosts to occupy the entire second rank now, because we started with two, remember? We got two pawns to go. I'm just seeing like if I could cause the AI to melt down um, due to the large number of teleportation moves that can occur. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Oh, I can't go to the back rank. That's right. I'm tempted to take some knights, just so this game doesn't go forever. What do you guys think? Or we could see how many ghosts we can get. Um, I think we've... well, no, my goal is to see if I can crash the AI, so we have to take more ghosts. Uh, let's take all the ghosts. Of course, the tricky question is how to give checkmate here, right? But I don't think it's that tricky after all. So yeah, I could just play Ghost E1, that's mate. But that's not beautiful. We have to move the ghosts a little bit closer first. Also, can I get this bishop onto c1? Just to, like, complete a picture here. Okay, then we'll put this ghost on b2, and the other one on c3, and then I'll put our king on d5. Actually, this looks a little more artistic if I put this, this, this ghost on d3. Um, just put the king there. Oh, I wonder, can I win by checkmate and by midline invasion on the same move? 
I think so. Yeah, now that's going to be the new goal here. So we're going to put the bishop actually on g6, the king on f5, and then do this midline invasion checkmate uh, thing. So, for this to work, the bishop's got to be on g6, or h7. Um, and then we'll put this one on um, a1. Okay. Oh, wait, but this knight's undefended. Um, that's a challenge. So that's not actually checkmate. It's just midline invasion. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I guess the knight needs to be somewhere else for this to work. Um. Damn, how do I get the knight to a2? Uh, that's going to take some work. Hopefully I don't hit the 50 move rule or something silly like that. This knight has to be an a2, however. Otherwise, there's no mate. Then we put the bishop back on c1. Alright, so now do we have the in midline invasion checkmate thing coming up? Um, I still have to have a ghost on b... No, I don't have to have the ghost on b2, but it looks nicer that way. Um... So we're going to get the ghost onto b2. Uh, so this is how we're going to do that. There we go. And then we play ghost e1. And then king f2, or king f4. Oh, 50 move rule. Oh well. We tried. We got so far. And we also learned that the 50 move rule is actually enforced. Oh well. It was worth a try. Now I'll never know if you could do the midline invasion checkmate. Unless you guys actually want to see me, like, give it another try. Midline invasion checkmate sounds fun. Um... But no, let's play, um, look how it just folds up the training dummy after you don't win. Like, you don't want to give it another go. It just folds it up. It's just, this, nope, you're done. Alright, so... Let's see if the queen a4 is checkmate. Uh, apparently not. All right, let's go, King! <laughs> How could anything negative ever happen here? I could Whirlwind, or I could just take it. Can't I? Oh, it's defended. Uh-oh. I forgot. I'm playing against special pieces. This, this is probably Doom of the worst variety. Um, hopefully queen h5 is not mate. Oh! <laughs> yes, 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 that works, of course. Um, I was only one move away from victory. 
Yeah. Typical story. Alright, but now I get the white pieces, so I'm just gonna win. I mean, how could the white pieces not win? Let's go, King. <laughs> I mean, this is hard to defend against if you're playing the black pieces. Especially if you've never seen this before. Um... Oh, e5 is checkmate. Even though king takes wins by midline invasion, uh, bishop takes king happens first. Um, the reason I didn't do king e5 is because queen d6 then is checkmate. Um, even though a whirlwind move would destroy the queen, it would destroy my other king, which is not allowed. So, yeah, apparently winning with two kings in some sort of blitzkrieg thing is difficult. It's like the one thing this training dummy is good against. Here, let's move the other king. I'm not sure if it even matters uh, which king you try to move across first. Alright, two kings versus nemesis. Um, here, keep pursuing my king. See how far it gets you. <laughs> What? Oh, that's toward my other king. I was like, that move is completely illegal. How would you manage to play it? Um, but it's not. It's, it's very much in the realm of legality. Alright, so that's check. Uh, I can't go forward. Well, that's unfortunate. Um... I'm sensing this might have not been the best opening. Oh, I have another king move, but it has to be a king move. Um, Alright, let's go over here. In case somehow that helps. Um, yeah, no, I sense that I'm pretty badly doomed here. Go back? No, I don't know. Yeah, my king looks safe-ish there. Okay. I suppose I would like to take this knight. Oh, we've got a duel on our hands. Um, I actually like my bishop, so... And... yeah, we'll pass for second half of that. This nemesis queen, which can't be captured, is such a pain. <laughs> Uh, I've got a warrior king move if I want it. I think I do. Oh no. No, I don't want to get into the line of being checked. So, we'll avoid that. Um, just exchange some pieces. How could this go badly? Alright, so this is an interesting thing, right? My opponent could bid zero stones or one stone. If he bids one, and I bid two, I lose two stones. If he bids one, I bid one, we both lose a stone. He bids one, I bid zero, my bishop's gone, but that's okay. Well, I mean, okay, so basically, 
what makes this interesting is that if he bids zero and I bid zero, I can remove his stone anyway. He's going to take my bishop next move regardless. Um, but if I bid zero, either way I get to take his stone. Um, he bid one against me because there's no reason to bid zero. Um, unless he expected me to use a lot of stones to try to save it or something, but... Um, Alright, so let's move toward a safer vantage point here. It's Whirlwind, and pass. So I sense that H4 and such are coming soon. If these pawns move, I just break through with my king and start taking everything. So he's not going to move the pawns. Uh, let's see if I can connect the rooks. Also, maybe I just checkmate white outright. If he's just going to keep moving his king about. Um, I could check him and take his rook and start taking everything. Alright, this is check. Um... I should take that and probably pass. He wants this board to open up. Um, I just want to get a piece down on D1. So I suspect h4 check is coming. That's weird. That doesn't even help him. So let's just move another piece forward. I just want to avoid getting my king sporked, like I usually see happen. Oh, that might happen again, but I could... Oh, but I can't take the damn queen. Okay, but I can move my king to b3, and then from b3 to b2 right away, and thus avoid a king fork. If my king ends up on a2, it gets forked, but here it's fine. Um, <laughs> check this out. Okay, so this is check, right? Part two of my move is getting rid of the piece that can block the check. Uh, oh, but his pawn can move sideways to block this. That's annoying. Um, I forgot he could do that. Otherwise, that would have been a really cool checkmate. Alright. This is check. And, oh, I, my second move can't be a king move. Or, it can't be a knight move. It has to be a king move. Um, so we'll stop king d1. He's got to play king e2, and this is just mate. Pawns move toward the king if there are the nemesis pawns. Um, yeah, two kings versus nemesis is not a very fun match. Um, two kings versus empowered is like fighting in the trenches, because you don't want any of the lines to open up. I wonder, can I just, like, I can't whirlwind here. I don't have any king moves, so it's strange that I get the prompt in that case. So yeah, that was next to a knight, so moves like a knight. Um, but it's no longer next to a knight, so it doesn't have that power of locomotion anymore. So let's hit the rook and see where it goes. Okay. Um...
I mean, you'd think an army called the Two Kings would move out their kings quickly, but no. Against this early activating rook, I just feel like staying at home and building up some kind of really ugly looking fortress thing. But since he insists, uh, we'll go here. Um. Oh wow. So we both bid zero. So I get to destroy a stone. And I got the free rook. So that was cool. Um. Alright, so we'll move behind this wall of pawns that have emerged. Evidently he's not playing pawn g6 and exposing himself that way, so... Um, we'll just slowly advance this fortress. My king can't actually approach because all his pieces are ridiculously powered, but... Um... are powerful. But I can at least menace as if I'm threatening to do something. Can you double castle? No. Actually, the only army that can castle is the standard chess army. None of them have the other castling ability. Um, Alright, so this no longer moves like a bishop, so I can just hit it again. Um, this looks like a cool way to hit it. Uh, okay, so this... I am a bit confused on what's going on here. Um... The empowered queen just moves like a king. Uh, otherwise the empowered army would be too strong. Um... Oh! Okay, so it's trying to play for a midline invasion itself. Um, which seems super unwise, but okay, fine. Maybe there's some hidden weakness here. Uh, okay, fine, we'll start bringing the pieces forward. Um... As long as I don't get my kings forked, I'm okay. Um, we don't need to duel to win this silly bishop. Okay, and prevent most of his advances before we advance ourselves. Um, okay, rookie one. Again, I don't see him forking my kings, which is pretty much... Unless there's some surprise checkmates somewhere, the fork of the kings is the one thing to watch out for. Okay, so this actually opens up... Oh, can I not take on Passant? Oh, I could take horizontally, though. That's weird. Oh, that is the en passant move. That's the weirdest way I've ever seen any client register an en passant move. Do I want to duel? Sure, I guess. It has to um, bid both stones to keep its bishop. And it does. Um, but I'm still winning. Because I take the bishop. We either duel or don't duel. And then I just move my king forward. Uh, 
and that's midline invasion. All right, but you guys wanted to see me like pick the Reaper. And not get a 50 move draw thing, but instead just win. Um, this is a fun little opening move I hadn't thought about until just not too long ago. After I saw the last game, it, it dawned on me that this is even more powerful than waiting for the opponent to move the pawns. Um, the one problem is you only have two ghosts, so the rest of the pieces have to do the heavy lifting now. Um, but that's not a big deal. There's not much lifting to be done. Actually, if I could get my pawn onto h5, uh, this rook can't get out. Or even on h4, this rook is trapped. Um, now this just looks scary, because I can't actually go to f7. It does stop king f7. I guess. I guess I'm vaguely threatening to play bishop f7. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I think it, if you, somebody made an AI for this, I think it could out-calculate most people. Because the variations that happen in this with surrounding pieces are just so deep. It's not... it's basically intractable. It's too difficult to come up with a perfect solution. Yeah, there's some trapping stuff that has to be done for this to work. Alright, so, we've pinned the queen. Um, problem is, like, trading pieces or pawns doesn't make this any easier. <laughs> Alright, so I've trapped the rook. I still have all eight pawns, which is good news for our plan. Um, oh wait, this is a free knight. Assuming he doesn't duel me, and if he, even if he does, um, I think I can. All right, he's not going to duel me over that. Don't know why not, but he's not. Hmm. Alright, so I guess I'm going to take a chance exchanging my bishop for the queen. Um, understanding that something's probably going to happen. Yeah. I suspected it would spend at least one stone to try to take that. Uh, only because that's not the best thing to do. So, the fact that it spent both stones means it's down to one. To actually do a duel, you have to have more than one stone if you're going to bid up against a higher ranked piece. Like, if I did rook takes pawn, it would have to give up a stone just to start a duel. And then it wouldn't have any stones left, so... The game forbids that kind of duel. Um, Alright, so that's a free rook. Yeah, uh, no, what I'm most concerned about at the moment is actually... Um, well, I should be more concerned about king takes queen. Because um, my queen's the thing that can take everything. Maybe this queen's invincible or something like that. I'd need to reread the rules. Um, but 
Okay, now that that threat's subsided, the biggest threat is just my opponent doing a midline invasion. Um, which is not very nice. Uh, so let's stop the midline invasion before it starts. How do I permanently build a fortress here? I guess I play c3, and then if a pawn is pushed, I push the other one, and there's no invasion. Alright, so we've got a fortress. Um, Alright, knight takes pawn is threatened. In the name of holding all my pawns, I'm going to take the knight. Let's see, um, okay, yeah, we'll duel. So, yeah, we've created a fortress now. It cost me my queen, but my queen can't checkmate anyway. So, phase two is eliminate this king side. Um, unless I can pick off this pawn somehow first. Let's liberate my bishop and see what the possibilities are. So there are going to be no more duels this game. This is just me picking up every one of his pawns um, and his bishop and then figuring out what to do next. Because I can't do a king invasion to take all the stuff. My knight has to be the one capturing. Which um, is going to be ugly. But it's feasible. So we've got knight a3, knight c2, knight e3, knight g4, knight e5. Maybe there's some easier way to get to the c7 square with a zugzwang or something. Uh, probably not. So the king can only guard one of these two squares at a time. My king, my knight could jump, in, jump into the opposite square of those two. Also, I should make sure he doesn't, like, move his king to f6 and then invade over here. So we'll do this. Uh, so knight c7, knight e8. My knight can't take the bishop. Knight c7, knight d5, though. Now we're talking progress. Though I have to be careful not to allow a midline invasion, but I think if I put my pawn on d5, that's accounted for. Yeah, problem with bishop a5 is then the bishop has to stay on a5 and then king a6 happens. So you have to be really careful with that. Whereas I get to be careless here, because now everything's just easily covered. My pawns take the light squares, uh, my bishop takes the dark squares, I didn't have to move the bishop. Um, my pawns still have the light squares. So, the bishop is a target. Um, Let's see, bishop c5, pawn cover c6, so he's still fenced in. That's a free bishop. That's a free pawn. So now I need my knight to take on g7.
Or really anything could take on g7. This just happens to be convenient. And safe. Now, it'd be nice if I had a light squared bishop, wouldn't it? Nah. But I don't. So we'll just take some ghosts. Now, hear what you're saying about the 50 move rule. I'll keep this pawn, this f pawn, as far back until we're closing in. Actually, um, you should think a little bit more about this. So, this is check. If he does king a6, I should not check him. But he didn't. So, uh, let's move all these forward and figure out how to net this king. Um, it's interesting. Well, let's put these on the 6th rank, and then we'll debate what's the right way to handle this. Yeah, we shouldn't have to promote to a bishop, though. There's plenty of ways to do this idea. The only thing that makes this challenging is that you guys also probably want to see me promote all the pawns. Oh, I guess it makes sense that if you promote every pawn into a ghost, that you're always going to have ten ghosts. Um, if you promote every pawn, that is. Um, got it. We want a fast checkmate where we promote all the pawns. <laughs> New variant aesthetic chess. Where your checkmate has to be beautiful or you just lose. Uh, Alright, so... I think this checkmate is going to happen with my king on... Uh, going from f4 to g5. push that pawn now, do I? Or if I do push it, I want to promote it right away. Um, so that's check. I'm starting to think that these ghosts have almost nothing to do with the checkmate that's going to happen. Um, maybe we don't have to promote them all. Um, hmm. Well, there are some shenanigans I could do here. Um... It's a pity, though, that there isn't a way to, like, force the king to step one step all the way across the back rank. Well, no, I've got seven ghosts. I could actually do that. Okay. Well, we'll have some fun with this, then. I can force the king to step out of the way. So I will do so. And we'll not block the f-pawn, either.
Um... Oh wait, but okay, it's not so entertaining because I can't like step onto a8 and whatever. I can give the king the ability to march to the opposite corner, but I can't force him to do that without without a ghost pursuing him the entire way. Um. Still debating about what to do with this guy. I should probably. I want to promote it right away, but I also want to leave that for the 50 move rule. Okay, yeah, you're not going to the corner. Not that easily. So then we promote these two. Well, so that's a lot of ghosts. So, yeah, how do I do the midline invasion and um, the discover checkmate at the same time? Um, I think I actually want my bishop on this diagonal for that to work. Oh, but for also, um, yeah, I need to promote my damn pawn. All right, so, yeah, we'll set up the checkmate. Uh, I should have left the A pawn for last. Uh, okay, so let's put the king on d4, the bishop on c3, and then fret the details. Oh no, I let the king out. Isn't this horrible? Just kidding. Alright, that king's going back. Okay, so then we go back here. Yeah, it'd be cool if that did crash the game. Alright, so now these are placed correctly. Now we just need to, like, get a beautiful checkmate set up. first be able to promote this pawn. I can't imagine that the beta testers, or whoever did the testing for this game, um, went to this level of detail. Uh, okay. Do I go for it right away, or do I want my knight somewhere else first? So I'm trying to imagine. King's on h8. I probably want my knight on h6. That makes it difficult to get the king to h8 in the first place, but it's still doable. Um, where do I really want my knight in this final position? I think h6 is where I want the knight. Then we focus on um, forcing the king to step into h8 or g7. Oh wait, no, here's the problem is that I have to defend my knight to force the king into h8. Um, 
So I have to defend it like this. Should give the king a little bit of breathing room. Not too much, but just enough that uh, my opponent will try to move the king toward the center. Um, of course, they've fallen squarely into my trap. Assuming that I had a plan. Uh, which hopefully I did. Okay, so can I get this king to go to h8? Willingly or otherwise. I have to be careful here. My knight is defended, so I'm still safe. He's still got king f8, and he's got king h8 as possibilities. And as soon as I promote, um, he won't have two options anymore. Um, but for my checkmate to work... I did not think this through clearly enough. Um, for there to be a checkmate on one of these squares, um, the king can't be taking the knight in the final position. So I've got to like play bishop c3 and move my king at the same time. Or I need to defend squares other ways, which was probably practical. Um, Okay, that's two moves. We're not going to get 50 move rolled this time. Three. Okay, so my knight belongs actually on e7. Four. Okay, I think I see how this is going to end. Five. And so the question is, um, how do I make this beautiful enough? Maybe I just put my ghosts on f5, g5, h5. That's probably the most beautiful way to go about this. Six. Seven. I guess I don't need this ghost. Eight. Hmm. Well, time to start getting down to business here. Nine. Ten. So unfortunately, I can't play Ghost to G6. Well, I could play G8, G5, and then this to G6. Or in the other order. Yeah, actually, well, no, this this hangs my knight. Um, hmm. Ideal mates are hard. So, yeah, I think 
actually need to lose a tempo to do kind of an ideal mate here. I was thinking I was going to just like play Ghost G6, or F6 G6, and then G8 G5, and then with the king in the corner just move my king. That doesn't quite cut it. Um, so I need to lose a tempo. So we'll do that. Wait, I confused myself. Whatever, this will suffice. It makes this knight look hideous, but at this point, we just want to see the result, so this will suffice. Um, Alright, here we go. Midline invasion checkmate. Light wins by midline invasion, but also by checkmate. Well, that's that's beautiful. What's the key to like screenshot? It's like F10, right? No, is it F12? There we go. Screenshot saved. Uh, yeah, there it is. It does not crash the game. Bummer. I tried. I tried so hard. Alright, so... If anyone has the game, we'll take an open challenge here. I hesitate to start a uh, correspondence game, because they do last forever. Um, does anyone play this? I'm not sure. I suspect like, if you found somebody at a chess club or something... You might be able to persuade them, hey, look, I got this cool game on my computer, do you want to play it right now? But in terms of finding an online opponent, I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> um, probably not. Probably most people don't appreciate chess variants. Um, oh no, just for the sake of having chess variants. I mean, there are plenty of cool chess variants out there. This one's okay. I just find it amusing, and it's beautiful, too, so. We'll see if we can get an opponent. Uh, I should have something to eat. So, leave this challenge open and see if anybody has this. Yeah, this could take a while. So I'm debating, should I make soup or should I have cereal? <laughs> I have too much cereal. I should vary it up. Yeah, it would be cool if you could uh, change up the game to enable, disable, or alter bidding in various ways. I think that would make it more interesting. But again, I think what would make this interesting is if somebody there were a way to just hook up an AI to this and um, you could have online matchmaking and have an online AI that gives you a ranking or rating or something and then you could have AIs compete over who can make the better AI for the game because the in-game AI is not that great um, 20 variants all with maybe 1 or 2% of the people who play chess. Which, um, not exactly the same as World of Warcraft numbers. That's true. So yeah, there probably aren't too many people who have this. I don't get any kickback for suggesting this or anything, but if you are interested in the game for any reason, it is on Steam. Uh, the URL is in the title, so. Um, 
but yeah, you'll have a very difficult time, in my experience, finding an opponent for anything other than correspondence. And, I don't know, if you're playing correspondence and you got like 10 games going at once, at least a couple of them will have somebody move every day. So, um, if you really, really, really are an enthusiast for variants, um, then maybe that's the sort of thing you'd enjoy. But otherwise, I don't know, just have fun hanging out here. Maybe I should prepare uh, some lunch and be right back. Let's see, have I missed anything here? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, I could try post posting something in the Lee Chess forums. I think I've done that before and nobody paid attention, but I could try it again. Um, yeah, let me try that. Let me see if I can find my old post in the Lee Chess forums. See, did I call this chest space two or just chest two? Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to find it looking. Maybe I put quote chest two quote. Yeah, that didn't do it either. Um, so. Search in general chess discussion. Let's say chess to the sequel. Um, so, oh, and I forgot they actually have video embedding capability in the Lee Chess forums now, so maybe the post wouldn't be entirely ignored if I did put a video in it. Um, okay. There, a few years ago, a new variant was released. Exclamation point. There we go. And that leads to the store to solve the CAPTCHA. Don't expect anybody to answer that right away. Alright, see you in like 15. Uh, we can also take a look at just like a correspondence game. Play by Homing Pigeon, it says. Um, you can actually see the final positions of previous games. Uh, like this one. I forget. No, I played black here. What am I doing playing as two kings? I don't remember. But maybe two kings versus empowered is just like an unfair balance. I'm not sure. But yeah, it looks like I crushed it here. Which is pretty surprising, considering I'm bad at two kings. Let me go back and take a look at one more. Ha! Check that out. Oh, I totally won the game. All right, I'm going to go prepare some lunch.
Okay. Leave that for a few minutes. Come back to it in a few minutes, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you? You unfortunately don't get to replay the games. Um, you just get to see the final position. Uh, like this one. Um, this is checkmate. Or no, this is black resigning as their queen is pinned. Uh, as white is threatening king a5. Or if black plays a5, white plays king b5. In either event, white wins. Um, so white has an unavoidable midline invasion. Um, just too bad for black. I should probably do something about this exception that shows on top. Let me relaunch the game. Got our screenshot. Midline invasion checkmate. Always add in the word discovered because it makes it sound more impressive. Okay, upload that image to Steam Cloud. Um, We don't need that on our disk anymore. And then launch the game again. Just to the sequel. Play. Hopefully this captures correctly. We're just going to have a blank, sc uh, blank screen on the stream. I guess uh, I'll seek a correspondence game. Hey, look. Okay, we get to pick an army. Uh, my opinion, the most fun one to play is Empowered. Um, you get to do some really unpredictable things with the Empowered army. Although, animals aren't too bad either. They're just really difficult to get a hang of. Um, I like the long-range attacks, though. Alright. So, yeah, we've now committed to a correspondence game. Let's take another one. And a third? Oh, we get to play RLD again. He, like, resigns on move one all the time against me. I don't know what he's got against me, but he just doesn't want to play me. So, we started those games. Um, come back in a little bit to check on those. In the meantime, I'll still be searching for an opponent here. Still not an opponent. Big surprise. <laughs> Alright, what's going on in the world of the internet these days? So, um, so yeah, a developer uh, by the name of Stab Yourself is making a game called Not Donkey Kong. Um, not else. Not a whole lot else going on on this site at the moment. Um, let me see if um, we got one of these correspondence games started. 
That would be too optimistic now, wouldn't it? Um, should I take the animals in one of these? Ooh, that sounds like something's boiling. Yep. Something's definitely boiling. Arge. Fudge, fudge, fudge. is that the stove works, but the oven's ruined anyway, so it's going to be replaced at some point. So I can't feel too bad about messing things a little bit. I should have washed that closer. My mistake. The other gap's okay. Um, should be very careful with this. Although, how could I possibly mess this up? Okay, I mean, I could lose my footing. That could happen. once it's congealed. No big deal. Alright, so... Uh, Firefox keeps crashing in Twitch streams. And yes, soup boiled over. Oh well, what can you do? You can figure out how to improve in the future, either watching the soup more carefully and not trying to stream at the same time, or um, having some kind of timer. Although that's a bit difficult to manage here now, isn't it? So I was talking about how animals are so fun. Um, I'm starting to think that they're not so fun anymore. Uh, well, yeah, so maybe I just go back to the empowered army again. Nemesis are kind of fun, too. Although, as we saw, the nemesis battles go on for freaking ever. Um, because the queen can neither capture nor be captured. It's a really interesting dynamic, but it's very confusing. It's very difficult to get a hang of. Um, but yeah, that queen versus the two kings army 
is so nice. Um, it's just really difficult for those kings to deal with this queen. I really like the empowered army, as tricky as they are to use. Alright, do we have any games started yet? Oh, whoops. Well, apparently I queued up two games. I only meant to queue up one, and I was curious about what I'd queued up. Alright, so we have six games in the queue. Yeah, it's Compassionate Queen. It sees what its um, teammates do and says, I'm not going to be a part of that. I don't know, we can punch out the training dummy again. I've seen people open this way. I don't fully get it. Alright, so this is a standard army again. I assume the point is that, like, uh, if black takes the white pawn, your white king can just move up and take it pretty easily. Oh, that's a check. That is certainly a check. <laughs> I could whirlwind, which would just be the most dangerous thing ever here. Um, so I threatened king b4 to a5, just winning. Now I could whirlwind. Hiya! Yeah! And then we just move the king forward and fall for some stupid checkmate that I missed. Like I always do. Oh, never mind. And then just king e5, king d5. Easy. Wins every time. Yeah, the two kings army gets an extra king move every single time you move. Um, it's just kind of crazy. So then we'll look at this in 2D perspective. Um, that's a free knight. Yeah, total lack of development. That's what makes it so ridiculous to play with this army. You don't need to worry about development. Not when you can play like this. Um, so I'm still concerned about pawn e4 possibilities. Pawn e4 is probably happening. Oh, never mind. Um, actually, doing this against the Nemesis army makes no sense, because the pawns just march toward your king. Um, so that makes what I'm doing pretty risky, to say the least. So let's push a pawn. Oh, I, my extra move can't be a pawn move. So fine, we'll whirlwind to kill this pawn. Huh. Um, here, let's use another whirlwind move. So now the rooks attack each other. 
Um, okay. Oh, my cursor was on the one king, and the other kings attacked, and that I just kind of freaked out there for a second. My only move is to move the king back. There's still no forks. Um, bonus move would still have to be a king move. And it is. All right. So figure out if we duel or not. <coughs> Pardon me. That's better. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to keep my rook, if that's okay. I have an extra warrior king move if I like. Um, my kings aren't making very much forward progress now, are they? We'll pass. So let's check. Now, my rook cannot capture the nemesis queen. The nemesis queen cannot capture anything. Hmm. Oh, the bishop retreats. Interesting. So, yeah, this queen is going to be a pain until I can find a way to... I think my king can take it, but nothing else can. So, I have to find a way to break through this amazing uh, defense. It might involve actually developing a piece. Oh, it moved a pawn. That was subtle. I suppose I'll retreat my king, even though that's a cowardly thing to do. Those pawns are looking scary. Oh, I walked right into it. I expedited the mate. Oh well, that was going to happen sooner or later. Um, try two kings again. Apparently they're not supposed to be very good versus the Nemesis army. Yeah, there's no humans playing. I'm stubborn, but... Apparently they're more stubborn. Alright, let's go, King Go. I could on King B5 and then Whirlwind did. Here, Whirlwind's not that great of a move. Until, like, I play this first, and then I do it. Now I've completely surrounded my king. Should we duel? Nah. I can just take this rook. Oh, right. It gets to decide to duel first. Hmm. Let's keep the rook. And then we get a warrior king move. Let me guess, pawn c6? Can I just remove that? All right. Um, so, unless I've walked into something, I'm just winning. Here, I'm going to move my rook to the other end of the board and then play my king forward. Just to leave more of a visual impression. 
And that's why they call the trading dummy a dummy. Um, it's not very good at gambling. Although, in that one case, it actually was wise to not try to win that duel. It, it was the duel that the dummy could not win. But I was so close to winning the game in terms of a midline invasion that I didn't care how many stones I spent on that duel. Alright, let's check out our games. Have we started? No, we've not. Is anyone online? Nope. Who knows? Maybe we'll find somebody. In the background, I might start up another game. <laughs> I don't know, like, go. Although I did go the other day. Hmm. Thinking I might have to just arrange a match as opposed to um, hoping for one. So, I might go back and play some more TAS 100. Mm, I don't know. That's too hard, though. There's always 2064 read-only memories, um, which is hilarious. Um, but most of you have already seen it now. Sorry for eating. So, fun little story, yeah, if you go to like a local um, supermarket 
or not supermarket, but what's the term for it? Where you have like a grocery store that has all kinds of other stuff attached. Maybe supermarket is the right word. Um, no, it wasn't even a grocery store, but anyway, if you go to a local market, and they've got an electronics section and a keyboard section. You'll occasionally just walk in and see some, like, kid walk in and just start playing pieces like this one. And they're trying to figure out which keyboard to get. And so you hear them, like, playing, um, what's the name of this? Moon, it's not Moonlight Sonata, it's... Uh, it's not Prelude in C-sharp minor. It's Fantasy Impromptu in C-sharp minor. You occasionally walk in and hear, like, just little kids will play this stuff. And it's like, what the heck? Leave some hope for the rest of us. Alright, so... Yeah. The problem with Go isn't so much that we saw it yesterday, but I am just goed out. Um... I don't know, let's take a classic army? Oh, no, let's just resign that. Do we get... I want an opponent that, like, isn't... Here, let's pick random. Alright, we got Nemesis. And Nemesis against Empowered. Which I hear is not a good lineup. Um, so Nemesis wants to keep the position closed. Empowered would very much like an open position. as that increases the power of the bishops and knights and rooks. This is a common... Oh, can I not play this to a4? Bishop to b6 is pretty common, but I would also... I'd almost call this a mistake, as it really doesn't do anything to help the bishop. Um, I wonder if the AI to this game is just like normal chess AI that happens to occasionally play some of these more advanced moves. Um, I wonder if that was how it was coded. That they just start with the basic AI and just have it randomly pick one of these powerful moves when they're available. Oh, if I take that, then knight takes knight. Very tricky. Ah. I see we have a student who is not diligent. I'm just joking. Just joking. It wouldn't surprise me if some of these kids, like, claimed that they never had a lesson, they learned everything on their own, and they're just a really naturally talented pianist. It would not surprise me if I heard any of that from them. Um, more likely they'd be truthful. Oh, we've got a duel on our hands. Um, okay. It cost three stones to take my bishop. One to do the duel, and two to beat my one. So it got lucky that it got the bishop, but... Um, yeah, I think I'm doing good here. Plus, now I've got three stones for that. The three I took, plus, I guess, the one I just captured for free. Um, so this queen is just moving like a king. Um, whereas mine moves freely, but it just can't, um, capture or be captured. Alright, every time we exchange pieces, though, this works in my favor. Alright, so we'll pin the knight. Alright, so these are adjacent to each other. So this moves like a bishop, and this one will also move like a bishop. Um, it's a very important detail. Mm 
Now wait, if I take this knight, king takes, and I play knight e6 check, I'm pretty sure I'm crushing it. Uh, oh, and there's no option other than king takes rook, so king takes rook is best. And now king moves somewhere, and I play queen g7 mate. Is there some way I could show off, like, my piece's powers, though? It's a pity I have to settle for such a simple checkmate. Like, can't I just hang my queen first or something? Oh well, this is checkmate. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, we got the empowered army, guys. So these pieces next to the knight move like a knight. So let's abuse that. Let's move the rook forward, and then move the bishop forward, and then move the knight forward, and, you know, just really mess around. So now they all still move like a knight. These two both move like a bishop. Oh. He's wanting to trade pieces. That's no fun. Alright, so we'll put the other bishop where the one bishop is. No big deal. Hey look, a free pawn. Because this is how bishops move. Alright, we have a duel on our hands. Now, it either bid 0, 1, or 2. I want to keep this bishop, so I'm going to bid 2. Uh, for some reason, it also bid 2. It really must have thought that I was going to give up the bishop. Alright, so these both move like a knight or a bishop. Um... So that's a free queen if I want it, but I don't think I want it. I think I have better. <laughs> oh, man. It's not a good day for the white army. If I could just put my rook out next to all this, um, this would be amazing. Oh, wait. Bishop g3 is mate. Um, because they both move like a knight and a bishop. Wait, no, bishop g3, that's check, and the king has nowhere to go. So, yes, this is checkmate. Um, so yeah, that's better than taking the queen. Yeah, we'll say, can I get the 3D model for the queen? Yeah, that's some pretty funky hair there. Looks like a tree. I don't know, maybe it's like more elegant or something. But yeah, this just wins. Let's get wrecked to training dummy. Uh, these games have not started yet. I'll take out one more on the dummy. Empowered is fun to play. We are just messing around there, but maybe this time we try it on the other flank. So, uh, rook b6, and then bishop d6, and knight a6, or knight c6. I mean, who needs to develop pieces when you can just put them in front of them? Who needs to develop pawns when you can just lift your pieces like this? So all these move like a knight. Um, I might just be winning this on the spot. We're very close to it. Um, Alright, so we'll bring the bishop forward, and then bring... Well, I can't bring my rook forward to where the bishop is, but that's okay. <coughs> See, so yeah, everything moves like an everything here. It's great. So, one thing you have to watch out for is the possibility of a midline invasion. Um, which really shouldn't happen. For so many reasons. Let's 
Sadly, I can't castle. Um, all right, I guess I lift my rook up here. This prevents midline invasion, but also my rook can move like a bishop. Um, the knight and bishop can both move like a knight and a bishop. Uh, this can move like a rook. It's a pity I forgot to lift my other rook. Otherwise, this would just be over. Um, so, I could move this like a knight. I'm only going to 2D view. Yeah, I'm, maybe it did see the mate in one. I don't know. Maybe just let it let the mate happen. Um, so I could do rook g5 check. Knight takes g5. Knight takes g5 check. Pawn f4. Bishop takes f4. Mate? No, bishop takes f4. King f2. Knight, no, my knight's on g5, so I can't go to g4. Um, these both move like bishops, though, so maybe I have something else. Like rook e4, knight e4, knight e4, surrounds the king. Well, no, the king could still access f3, then. If my knight moves, it no longer has the ability to move like a bishop. But I've got rook e6 check. That looks strong. That looks just crushing. Um, so we've got a knight that moves like a rook or a bishop. We've got a rook that moves like a knight or a bishop. We've got a bishop that moves like a rook or a knight. Um, of course, once they all move off this rank, they're no longer near each other, and none of that applies, but in this stage, it's fun to think of it this way. I like the idea of knight takes here. Knight takes, he moves something, and then I just move my knight back. Oh, but then this king runs. I don't like knight takes anymore. How about the other knight takes? I think we got something going here. Hmm, I forgot about this mechanic. Let's bid one. Okay, so we keep the knight. Um. So the king is surrounded. Basically. Wait. Oh, and this stupid knight over here protects against bishop f4. Um, which might not be that convincing to begin with. But if I move my other knight to f4... I'm sorry, move my other bishop to f4. Um, things get pretty crazy. I just want to checkmate. So I'm looking at crazy ideas. Oh, knight takes f2, discover check, wins a queen. That will probably help checkmate pretty quickly. Um, another fun idea, if this rook were on b1, I could do like knight c3 and knight takes b1, and the king could not escape. The damn rook's on the wrong square. What gives? So, yeah, it's looking like knight takes f2 and then knight takes either rook or queen. That's probably best. I'm not seeing a checkmate. There's knight takes d4. Um, which doesn't seem to help anything. Yeah, it seems like I can't control f4 and d3 at the same time. Which are just like a knight's throw away. Um, I 
So we'll do this. Keeping in mind that king takes knight is illegal due to rook, or knight takes f2. So the most it can spend to try to win this now would be one stone. I'll bid one. So I keep my knight. So what convinced me to go here is that I could do knight e4 check here. I might have better. I've got bishop takes d4. This is... Well, this definitely opens the position. Doesn't win a queen, though. Ah, decisions, decisions. I think I should just take the queen. Even though this basically denies me a quick checkmate. Um... Wait, what? Oh, that's... Yeah, I'm capturing a higher ranked piece. Um... Oh, well, knight's dead anyway. Let's bid zero. Um, so that just saves it the trouble of having to take the knight. Um... All right, we'll attack the rook. And the rook's probably going to move to g1? No. That would be too sensible. Um, all right, we'll get this rook's out of, rook out of harm's way. That's a free knight. OK. I don't understand that, but we'll take the rook. Um, I seem to have surrounded my pieces with all these pawns. Let's go back. And then we'll go forward again with all of our pieces this time. Except the queen, because who needs it? Okay, that's another free pawn. <laughs> I think it's just trying to delay the inevitable here. Alright, so now my knight moves like a rook. Rook moves like a knight. Um, so this looks like a fun way to develop. Because then we play knight e4. And then our rook knights just converge on the king. So this rook on f4 is checking the king, which has to go to c2. If I could just put a bishop into this melee, um, this would be over. But the bishops don't have anywhere safe to go. Um... My bishop's getting surrounded if I'm not careful, so let's create a safe escape square for this bishop. It's going to go to f4 next, and we'll have... Um, this knight is now giving check along the diagonal. Um, the bishop guards this diagonal, so yeah, king b3, if not forced, because king d1 is legal, but this is the serious try to not lose. Um, I think at this point, though, I have to play b6 and a6, or the king just succeeds by mid-line invasion. Um, so, here we go. b6 and a6 are happening. So this could move like a knight, so why not? Let's move it like a knight. I 
And we're going to decline that... Oh, shit. I was going to say, we need this pawn here. Uh, I hadn't considered, though, because it took the pawn. Now I have to win this duel. But that's okay. I can win this duel. It just means I can't bid zero. Because if I bid zero, then I lose the duel. But yeah, otherwise I'm fine. But yeah, I needed this pawn here. I can't win this by a duel, because I need to capture to stop king a5. Um... Okay. Um, so now this bishop is like a super bishop. Um, let's exchange bishops because this one wasn't going anywhere. Sure, let's accept that duel and pay one more stone to remove the rook. And then the rest is easy. Um, I think my queen's going to be the one that delivers the checkmate here. Which is pretty unusual. Because this queen only moves one square at a time. But there's no stopping it and it happens to be the closest by piece. So there we go. That's the training dummy. Oh, hey look, we have an empowered opponent. wonder what he thinks of our unique opening. Do a rook lift, do another rook lift. Oh shit, he could take my rook. But it chooses not to because it's playing nice. <laughs> Yeah, GG. Um, here, I dare you to step forward again. Check. Oh, this might be like one of the fastest. Okay, how do you deal with this? Um, Wait, I don't cover f7. If I were covering f7, this would be over. Um, so let's go cover f7. Okay. This moves like a bishop. Um, don't know that that matters. So, yeah, it sealed the escape square on f7. So I think rook d4 is just checkmate. Like, I'm pretty sure rook d4 is mate. Um, not completely, though. Wait, so rook d4 is not even check. Um, but if it were check, it would definitely be mate. Um, so now what? I feel like there's got to be something here. So I control... My knights move diagonally. So I control everything other than d6 and e6. Um, I could control d6 by playing rook d4, but then he just plays like d5. And I'm just a little too slow. Um, I could play knight g5 just as like a normal knight move. There's no surprise in that. We got all the active pieces in the world and no idea what to do with them. So how good is that? Um, I feel like I should give a lateral check, but I missed that last turn because I was wanting to develop my knight. Oh wait, knight d4. Knight d4 is definitely check and does not put any pieces on pre. Um forces the... there's no way to block the knight check. I could do the same thing with knight g5 though, so what's the difference? 
On d4, it interferes with my bishop moving this way, but that's okay. It interferes with my other knight wanting to go to interesting squares, but I think they can share. Alright, so that's check. The only move is king d6. And now we have a knight that controls c6 and e6. But also moves like a bishop, so it controls the squares in front here. Um, so... The symmetrical opening isn't the most effective. I mean, it works, but... Um, so I can play knight b5 check, forcing king d5. Um, oh, I see, I see. Check this out. Knight b5, check. King d5 is forced. And then this is double check. And because it's double check, that's mate. Otherwise, um, yeah, you could just block this knight check here. But the rook is also giving check. Uh, so I might have walloped on the dummy here. Accidentally. So my last move was rook to b4. There's our screenshot. Uh, yeah. And note, there was no way that black could capture... I mean, other than early in the game where he had this knight takes b3, none of my pieces were open for capture. And I'm guessing it just decided that having the knight um, was valuable early in the game, so it decided against exchanging that for the rook. Um, but yeah, evidently the training dummy missed this possibility. So... GG? Maybe? I still don't get that rook f7 move, but I'm starting to appreciate that developing your pieces symmetrically um, has only limited potential. Even against this AI, even against this like empowered opponent, like against other opponents it's probably even worse to do this symmetrical opening. But against this empowered opponent, it's okay, because the opponent's development was slow, too. But yeah, this rook b4. Pretty cool stuff. I wonder if I had anything other than rook b4 in this final position. I mean, I guess c4 probably mates, too. But it doesn't look as cool. So, yeah. This music is loud. Yep, still their turn. Whatever. Looks like we're probably not getting an opponent for chess 2.